we are here to check out a generator that's not working correctly and look at that it's one of the old tan ones he's had all kinds of problems yep these are the ones i first started out on oh yes this one's the biggest pain in the hind end of them all let's see what went on it says overcrank. this is kind of the brain dead version of all of them this thing has very little to no fancy electronics on it at all it's plain jane to the hilt no choke no electronic governor so if your little springs get out of whack she uh goes balls to the wall and cramps 70 hertz into your wall socket let's uh see what happens here so we got a solid over crank if you guys need to get rid of uh stickers that somebody puts on you don't like them just use your hand torch to kind of warm the area up it'll peel right off just like a heat gun comes right off Let's go back to manual. Uh, oil level is the first thing I checked. I want to make sure that was okay before I just kicked it on. More times than not. Oh, I can tell you right now what's wrong. Yep. Battery exploded. That was another humongous problem that Generac had. They had a very, very aggressive battery charger. And it would overcharge the batteries and eventually bake out the water. And then they explode. This is uh, not the first time I've seen this. This is why I tell everyone, change your battery every four years that seems a little extreme but you bought a generator to have it there when you need need it to work even though it's metric your 5 16th nut runner will fit it as you noticed we've got a real nice split there and kind of surprising is yeah and see what I've had happen in the past when this blows up like this, if it's running, it'll suck that acid right into the engine and then blow it all over the windings and then it shorts the windings out and then you lose the stator. That's like worst case scenario. But according to this, looks like this was changed possibly in 18. I mean, Exide's a good battery. I mean, that's what they recommend the eight is taken out so i'm going to say actually 2008 so this battery should have been changed probably a long long time ago let's go ahead and make sure this battery charger is still working let's isolate this away from the battery here and uh let's see where we're at battery terminals here you can see that those they're probably okay it looks a little corroded right there we have 14.1 which is more than abundant which is a lot of the reason why this thing uh, toasts the batteries. Battery chargers right inside here. When those go bad, they're outrageously expensive. I don't even recommend using the same one again. You're better off with a true trickle charger. We went and got a new battery, die hard. So what I usually like to do is get this completely cleaned out as best as possible. This acid crap is just gonna eat the paint up. So we'll just get some of this nasty crap wiped out of here first. And then I'm gonna spray some uh, acid neutralizer on there to kind of neutralize anything that probably got all over the place when it blew its guts all over. The battery was at least four years old, she said. She didn't think it was the original one. It tends to neutralize. So we'll kind of spray that on there. It's supposed to turn different colors when it hits acid. We're gonna put that on the uh, terminals here. That way it kind of eats up that crap. If there's anything bad on it, it should uh, turn colors. Like I said on that torch thing here, just heat it up a little bit with your torch from a distance, pulls right off. The oil's good to go. It's uh, right at the perfect level. Another thing to watch out on these, these bellows here tend to rot out. If that rots out, it won't suck the fuel in because the fuel literally comes in to the box usually yep right back here in the back yep there it is and that uh, intake compression stroke pulls the fuel right into the intake manifold there and if that's rotted it won't work and when i was looking at that sticker before i took it off it did say 2018 three years it just uh like i said you gotta keep a good eye on this water levels make sure those water levels don't get too low I always got a junk screwdriver to use on this because I don't want to use my good ones. 
because it will eat it up. Water levels are good to go, so we're fine there. The date code actually is right here. The EOL letters. Uh, I'm not sure how they're doing it, but it can be decoded. Generally, it's certain letter is equivalent to a certain number. So we've got that all undone. So let's get this. Yeah, that turned green is what it did. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, if somebody's replaced the one, I want to make sure they don't have a, a weak strands. It seems like it's fairly strong. I'll just use a regular old wire brush. I had one of those little tools that you can buy. That works good too. And that's brass that they put on there. Supposed to hook your ground up last. See, it says black. That's not even the correct one originally. So somebody's changed that at one point in time or another. I know a lot of homeowners are watching these, which is fine but I don't provide technical support. My original intent for any of my videos has always been to help the technicians out that have actually been through the schooling and stuff. Just a lot of liabilities on certain things. I know you can do this, you can do that, and that's great, whatever. But in the Sue Happy world that we got here, it's in my best interest to protect myself. So I put a little sticker on there for those guys that aren't uh, paying attention. They need to check the water levels at the PM. Got today's date on there. Get our protector sprayed on there. It's going to give us a little bit of protection against corrosion. Wipe off the excess that's all over the sticker so it don't look so ugly. We got most of all this wiped out, so let's blow some of this crud out of here. See, I'm able to get right in there, and this, when it's running, is live voltage. I wanted to make sure that these are actually tight. And those are your control wires there that switches the transfer switch back and forth. So there's actually 240 volts on the two small ones. Transfer switch DC voltage is on the other two. I've got the Fluke 87.5 good to go. Let's go to manual here. That's not sounding very promising. And I noticed that we're not blinking on our display here. sure why it did that in auto mode should be blinking at me that it lost its exercise must have been powered by the utility so it didn't lose it which is kind of surprising let's uh, go in here one more time see if we can get a start a lot of stuttering going on don't sound real smooth but we're running uh, 247 let's check frequency we're at 60 hertz so we're low on that should be 61 and a half on the first spring, 62 and a half on the other, and then uh, check your voltage after that. So let's go ahead and get that tuned in here. What I'll do a lot of times, I'll loosen up that one spring here, completely take it off. We'll tune this into 61.5. meter's a little too accurate, so we can go ahead and put it on averaging, so 61.5. Now we'll go ahead and hook our spring back up. What happens is it starts to loosen up. And 62.5 area, so we're good on that. I like to test this thing to make sure it's gonna shut down. I'm going to rev it up to 72 hertz and it should shut down. And it went off on overspeed. So that safety is working like it should, which is something I like to check when I'm doing my tests. So to erase it, you turn it to off, back to auto. If the power is out, it would start back up. These are the old generators. They don't have any inner switches or anything like that, so nothing major to redo. If we wanted to reset our exercise, we would just push that button down and hold it for about 10 seconds. It would start, you let off of it, and in the next week, seven days from now, will be that particular time uh, would be when it would start. Not fancy like the newer ones. Let's go ahead and restart it. See, now that the springs have kind of changed their tension position, see how it does 62.5 i hear a little bit of stutter out of it 
these particular models here kind of sucked about having issues with their uh, regulator back here, which ain't really a regulator, fuel solenoid, you know what I'm saying? The um, actual tuning spot, there's a little knob right here. And what you had to do is actually set it for the highest speed, if I remember correctly. It's been a while. I might check that to see if it runs a little better. Let's take a look at the spark plug here. Yeah, it's burning fairly decent. Yeah, it's right at 30 thousandths. It may have been what it was. So we're not out of, out of range. I'd have to pull it up to remember. This is running on propane. Propane, they would sometimes go with a smaller gap. Didn't always make a humongous difference, but it uh, was something that they recommended back in the day. Don't know if they're still doing that. And it was only on this particular series. I always like to check my battery cable connections here on the contactor, make sure they're all tight, make sure everything's good to go there. Let's get this back on there. You can tell that it's starting to crack a little bit. It's getting older. Let's check our filter here. Air filter is clean. Everything's clean in there. You can check gas pressure and stuff like that. But generally, it's not an issue too often. The essential issue he has, it didn't want to start and the battery was bad. So you got to ask the customer, do you want me to dig in nice and deep and tear into all these things that really aren't really been a problem? which costs more time, which costs more money. So you don't really want to spend a bunch of time on things that they didn't ask you to do unless they're okay with that. So we could check our spark. This little gizmo here, it'll show you that it's getting spark, but it doesn't show you how strong the spark is. I've got one that's actually got the gap and you can see how far the sparks can able to jump, which as fast as this is starting, really not a whole lot of reason to. I want to test this at the transfer switch. So what we're gonna do, see if it'll actually transfer over. So what we can do is if you say you, you're here and the homeowner wasn't, you can literally unplug their transfer switch here and it should start up on its own. And then when you plug it back together, it's gonna transfer over. You undo that. When you do, if it's in auto mode like it should have been, the green should start to flash, which tells you that it does not have utility voltage and it should start up and it would switch over, which it won't switch over with it unplugged until we plug it back in. When we plug it in, it's gonna run for a minute and then it's gonna shut back down. So this should start up. I just hear a little bit of a stutter to it. It ain't perfect, but it ain't horrible. Let's go ahead and plug this back in. That should have switched it over. Probably gonna switch right back real quick. Yeah, 0.9 amps, so it's 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 powering something really small. So we know that it switched over. It should switch back here in a second. That's going to drop down to zero. While we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and make sure that green light went back to solid. You can also check our amperage on our battery. This has DC amperage on it. Got an arrow going through. Usually you want that pointing towards the load. So we're pulling 1.6 amps, or I think it points towards the power. I haven't checked the manual on it. So if we check it this direction, hit the hold button, 1.6 in a positive manner. Obviously it's directional. Right now it should be charging, so it would be a positive. When it's cranking, it's going to be a negative. Get also off the negative here. It has a zero function, so if you want to zero it out, but this meter's pretty good about going to zero either way. And there it shuts back down. While it's charging, it's charging in at 2.3 amps of current. So you can see right away how much that battery charger's cranking in there. That's not a trickle at 2. Point whatever amps. Now we'll go ahead and start it. You're gonna see this thing jump up to about uh, anywhere from 75 to 90 amps of cranking. Watch this. We can probably do, I'm gonna see if we can do inrush. I'm pretty sure it'll do it. So inrush on DC is as much as 315 amps. Now for the usual generic meter that don't have that feature, which very few do, here's what it would be if you're just watching it. Mark. 
but that's the reason why I like that meter. Uh, not too many of them got that. I mean, you got some cheapies out there that can measure it, but can they measure true inrush? Can they measure it in a quality um, manner? Unfortunately, for the $380, $400 this thing costs, you would think they could have made it in America, but unfortunately, Fluke did not. They made it in, I think, China. You know, it just don't seem right that you can charge the premium dollar and you still couldn't have made it here. It's kind of sad. And uh, like I said, I was gone for a while, so I wasn't able to, to check it out. But then I noticed Monday that it didn't, didn't test. Okay. But and I you know, what you can do too is if you just opened up the generator and look on top here, if it has a problem, it's going to show a red light. And so if there's a red light, that's bad. Red means stop, it's done, and you got a problem. Um, but if you have a green light, then it's, it's, oh, okay. it's in standby. Uh, yeah. The newer ones, they put little lights on the outside to make it a little easier so you don't have to open it up. But it's just as simple as turning the little knobs on the front and just open yeah. it up and then lock it back you down. Know what? Jim always did that. So all I have to do is lift it up and make sure that the green light Yep, Yep, green, green's good. System set, that means you're working. If you got a red light, then you've got issues. If they're all blinking, it, it tells you right on the front here what's okay. going on. Okay. Um, but yeah, if we'll go ahead and set it right now by just holding the button down for about 10 seconds and it's going to start up and run and then it'll run for 12 minutes but you can stop it once it's started running it'll it'll still hold that in memory so i've held it so next week at about 12 14 area it'll be ready to go and i put it back onto auto auto is where you normally want it at that means automatic you know when you need it off. Okay. If it's an off, you'll have no lights. So that's that's obviously bad because you won't have anything. And if you put it on manual, that means it manually will run just like you're starting a lawnmower or whatever. But, but it's on auto now. It's on auto right now. Yep. Okay. And everything looks pretty good, so you shouldn't have any more problems. Okay. Well, um, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So you've seen what I did there. I educate the customer. If they want to know more, I'm more than happy to tell them exactly everything they'd want to know. But it doesn't hurt to let them know how they can check these things on their own. The more they know, the better they're going to be at telling you when things aren't right. It uh, shows them that you care. There's some that don't want to know that. That's fine too. I offer the information and if they take it, great. If they don't, that's great. Whatever. Those are the things I like to do when I'm talking to my customer. And so that's my little generic bag here. Unit is uh, working like it should. You guys got to see firsthand how that uh, exercise works. I like to at least at a minimum put a wire tie on this box. They used to give us a nut and bolt for this. I, I actually might have one on the truck. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a nut and bolt. That way kids can't get into it. So we got the nut and bolt on there. Not opening up for a kid. They can't get it off by hand, but you can take it off the pair of pliers. You can put a lock on there, but then it's gonna be cut off when you lose the key, which is usually what ends up happening or it's rusted up or whatever. That's gonna wrap this one up, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you uh, are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I do generator videos here and there. there several other ones you can look at. I'm not technical support, so if you're having problems, make sure you get a hold of your local Generac dealer and uh, get help there. But uh, for little simple things like batteries and change of spark plugs and oil and stuff, I have no problem showing that kind of thing. If you guys enjoyed it, like I said, if you would, give it a thumbs up, smash that burger on the way out, and uh, subscribe. Until next time, we will catch you on the next one.